Hey there, it's Dr. Jones, and this is Unit 1, Lecture 2. And in this lecture, we're going to take a look at how I make decisions about what is right and what is wrong. So, let's start off with this discussion. First, is there a, a difference between what's legal and what's right? Now, norms are those things where we as a society decide what is uh, acceptable behavior. So what's acceptable behavior is not necessarily what ne just what we're thinking of as what's moral uh, as much as we're also looking at what, what do we expect out of uh, others in society. So we assume that there are just things that are okay and things that are not okay. So loyalty to other people, especially if you have a spouse or partners, uh, like in business or whatever, you should be loyal to those that you have some sort of responsibility to. Uh, you have things to do uh, where you need to get along with others. So waiting in line, taking your turn, not speaking too loudly in social situations. Uh, don't talk while you're at the movie theater. Um, don't use bad language, especially in public. Things along those lines are norms that we put out there. Now, you may not always look at those as necessarily ethical questions, and, and there may be norms out there that we don't look at as ethical questions. Some people would and some others would not. They're largely not legal questions, unless, of course, we're talking about things like don't buy alcoholic beverages if you're not 21, and don't buy alcoholic beverages for somebody younger than 21. You know, that's a, a legal question, and so it's a norm, but it also happens to be something that's a legal question out there. So we come up with various kinds of norms in society, and, and they're different from, and sometimes higher than standard than just whether or not something is legally correct out there. Now, <clears throat> there are different theories about ethics, and let me just explain what I'm talking about here. So you will generally in your life subscribe to um, a form of ethical thinking. Now, you'll remember from the last lecture I did where I talked about uh, Kohlberg and looking at different levels of moral reasoning that as you grow older, you learn to think in different ways. Well, we also will take a look at ethics in different ways. And some people see things as black and white. Some people see things as different levels of uh, black and white and gray and beige and chartreuse and whatever else out there, but they'll look at a situation and make a decision based on a different platform than you do. And that's just the way we are. So sometimes people will say, here is what's right. Here is what is the correct thing to do, say, in natural law. This is how I believe uh, in my in my mind, and therefore, if it's not done that way, then it's illegal, and unethical, immoral, fattening. Some people would say, but that's that's the idea. Is because this was what it said, God said it, therefore I need to do it. Okay, that is a way to look at a situation. You have ethical egoism, and several wrote about ethical egoism, but that's basically the idea of what's right for me, what's in my best interest, is what needs to happen. And I get along best in this world if I, you know, look out for number one. That's another way to say this. So I don't need to worry about you. You need to worry about you. I need to worry about me, and may the best person win. Okay, different way to think about it. Utilitarianism. 
thinking of what is the greatest good or the greatest happiness or whatever it is, also known as bottom line ethics. And bottom line doesn't mean just what's in the best profit, although that does happen. But it, you know, whatever ruler you're using here, whatever situation or decision makes the most sense, that's the one we're going to follow. And if you look at, if you have historical uh, concepts in mind, if you look at uh, the Ford Pinto and the problems with Ford Pinto, and if you don't know that, I'm not going to go through all of that. You need to just Wikipedia that and go find out the problem. But essentially, the decision was made for the Ford Pinto that it was more expensive to Ford to go and recall all the Pintos and put this very inexpensive part into the car uh, that would prevent the explosive reactions that happened. That was l more expensive than to pay all the damages from lawsuits from people who died or were disfigured. They actually had people who calculated this up and so in the end, the decision was, you know what, we'll just leave it out there and we're just going to let that happen. And that's what's in our best interest. Well, in the end, it wasn't because one, the moral outrage uh, that came about as a result of it was a lot more expensive uh, to the company's reputation. But two, when that was found out and it did become found, you know, something that people found out about, when it was found out that was what was going on, then there were punitive damages that came out on Ford. You know, they were just looking at, well, here's the cost of an arm, here's the cost of, you know, uh, life, etc. And so we'll just calculate that all up. But when they found that they already knew that that was going to happen, then there were punitive damages brought on top of it. It became much more expensive. And then they still had to bring all the Pintos back in and fix that those things so they still had to do both of those pay for the damages and pay to fix the cars that's utilitarianism that not in all cases <laughs> please don't misunderstand me it's not that all the time when you do utilitarianism you're doing something bad no 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 that's just one example of utilitarianism utilitarianism also works out think of it this way You have two job offers, and you take a sheet of paper, you draw a line down the middle of that sheet of paper, and on the left-hand side, you put all the good and the bad for job A, and you put all the good and the bad for job B, and then you compare them. That's utilitarianism as well. You decide which of those is the best option once you look at all the good and the bad, okay? So from a positive standpoint, it's it's definitely used. Um, it's also misused, just like any of these other methods can be misused as well. Categorical, categorical imperative, something is right or wrong, largely because it is what's right or wrong for everybody. And it's not just what's in my best interest, it's what's in everybody's best interest out there. Then you have those that look for the social contract. And you remember from uh, the first lecture about uh, ethics that I did, where we talk at that idea that you look for the rights or for justice out there for everybody, what's best for uh, people overall. Rights theory itself, what you are entitled to. I have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I have a First Amendment right. I have a Fifth Amendment right. I have whatever rights I have that are granted to me by government or by society or, or whatever source out there. Moral relativism. You know what? I can't do it here, but in another location, it's okay. It's not the same thing as the difference between New York pizza and Chicago pizza, okay? That's not moral relativism out there. You might be going, what in the world is he talking about? Okay, 
the fights that happen. Okay, I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan, and I'm not a Cubbies fan. I don't hate the Cubbies, but really, the Cubs and the Cardinals hate each other, or at least they pretend to. And so there are things you don't do in Chicago or you don't do in St. Louis because it offends you. So if you wear a Cubbies jersey in St. Louis or a Cardinals jersey uh, in the north side of Chicago, you can expect to have people upset, okay? There are things you just don't do. But that's not what moral relativism is. Moral relativism is that if I go to Japan, the way to interact with people and what's right in their interactions is different than if I'm in Los Angeles or if I'm in Dallas, Texas. And so I am going to act a different way. Now, from a societal standpoint, you can understand that. But from what's right and wrong standpoint, you might have questions about, is that the correct way to look at things? So more relativism is really, you know, Sometimes um, people look at that as not just circumstantial ethics, but uh, ends justifying the means. Whatever's right over here is the way that I'm supposed to go to it. Virtue ethics, we could spend a lot more time, and, and the book spends a fair amount of time on that. Virtue ethics really is look for what are the good or virtuous things that you should do in life and go with that. So if thriftiness is or if uh, honesty is or whatever, that's what you make your decisions on. You strive for those qualities in yourself, in the people you hire, in the customers that you have, in the products that you make or the services you provide. Those are the things that you work with. Now, if you remember the first lecture, that last ICC credo very much talked about the virtue things that they saw in the way they interacted with their customers and what they put into their products and services. I would take that as a virtue ethics credo. So that's what they were looking at versus Johnson & Johnson, which was much more looking at the social contract that they had with everybody that they worked with. It's a very different way to look at a credo between those two companies. So, all kinds of different ethical dilemmas out there. These are from your text as well. I just, I just want to say, these are examples of kinds of things. Should you say something that's not correct, for whatever reason, even if you feel like you have a good reason, is that a reason to lie or to say something that's incomplete? Notice allowing false impressions. Well, I didn't lie, but I let him think, you know, is that correct or incorrect out there? Um, not telling everybody everything. Now, please. Don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to say you should tell everybody everything that's happening in your life. Because please, I don't want to hear all of that, nor does everybody else want to hear everything that's happening in my life. But if you were a real estate agent and there were certain things about a piece of property that you didn't tell the client, that could be, and in, in many cases, in many situations and locations, it is considered to be a, a breach of the law that if you don't have full disclosure that you have uh, not uh, complied with everything that, that the law requires out there. So as you look at these different things, should you come to a full and complete stop at a stop sign or at the stoplight? Or is it okay to get down to two miles an hour as you turn that corner? There's lots of different ethical dilemmas that we come up with in each and every day and how we handle them says something about us. And we rationalize this, okay? We rationalize a lot of things. Okay, nobody else was using that red light. I mean, was using the red, green light, so I decided I'd use it. Or, but I, I, I'm almost late for work. Or I have friends that, you know, 
does uh, do this as well and nobody cares. The police don't care if you go five miles an hour over the speed limit. Okay, these are all rationalization. And I'm not drawing any conclusions about that. I'm just saying these are rationalizations that we make every day. People make these out there. And we all do this kind of thing, even if we think we are holier than thou and we never rationalize um, that we're rationalizing, you know, just about other things. We may not rationalize about what somebody else does, but we will rationalize in other situations. And we just need to recognize that. And if we recognize that, then it's something that we can deal with if, if it needs to be dealt with. Um, and I'm not here to be moral. I'm just saying recognizing those things is part of growing up and it's part of being a good citizen out there and doing what's, what's right in the world. So if you were to decide that you didn't, and I don't want to go into this a lot, but if you decided that you didn't want to have full disclosure out there, I like what this, uh, this person said, this expert said, you know what, no matter what you do in your life, it can be found out. If you say that you got a certain degree and you didn't, people will find it out. If you think that you are um, going to get away with a, a picture that is indiscreet, but you took it down, it's going to find its way back out somehow. You know, one of the things that I think it's interesting to talk to young people about um, they believe they can put anything that they want to up on social media. and You can't judge them on it. And it's a, a stark reality check to them when somebody does do that. When they don't get a job and they think it's unfair because all of their social media posts show them getting drunk or being blotto out there or being too risque or you know, whatever it is, and they haven't picked that up, but the truth is we all have that. I mean, if you have a rant on your Facebook page, you can expect not only do your friends and family see that, but other people see it, and if your employer sees it and disagrees with it, that could have a negative effect on you. So just think about the things you do, that you say, those things will get back to somebody out there. Folks, thank you for listening.